Hello, friends, and welcome back. It is now officially 2022, and we are on season two, episode four. Is that right, Olivia? We're on episode four of the Pro Aging Podcast. Now, I know you're all used to listening to me talking about from the outside in what you could do to look better, feel better from the procedures and all the fun stuff I do, but the next few episodes are going to be focused on working from the inside working on the long game rather than the outer sheen. Now, part of health and part of living is dying, disease, chronic states of inflammation. All these things are really part of health as a whole. Whether it's acquired, whether it's genetic, they all affect our beauty from the inside out and the outside in. Now, what's important in the modern world is we have a quarterback for this journey. There are so many different types of doctors out there, treatments, specialists, super specialist, and it becomes difficult to kind of work it all out and figure out who you need and where you need to go and what you need to do, whether you're healthy or you're sick. So today, I have a special guest, Dr. Richard Fershein. Now, most importantly, he is my own personal physician and a friend and a colleague. We have numerous patients that we share together. Now, I know I look like a pretty young and healthy guy, but I too have to monitor my health. This guy got me out of a near-death experience with COVID. If you can believe it, he diagnosed and treated me for mercury toxicity, and he helped optimize my familial high cholesterol state, which I had seen cardiologists for years and needed fine-tuning, not just with medication, but with also more inside integrative treatments that affected my lifestyle. And most importantly, he taught me about things about longevity that I did not know myself as an anti-aging specialist. So, Dr. Richard Fershein is a board certified physician in family medicine. He's a leading authority in the field of integrative medicine, in precision-based medicine, and in anti-aging. And he really uses a big picture kind of outlook on nutrition, everything from gut biome, looking for allergies, and really using modern-based diagnostic techniques to figure out customized treatment protocols, whether you have chronic disease or you're just looking to live a better life. Now, let's talk about chronic disease states. I think in the last decade or two, society, medicine, people, the media, everyone's focused on chronic illness, obviously, we're living longer, disease is part of life, but inflammation, whether it's from Lyme's disease, post-COVID syndrome, chronic asthma, all these different things that are going on that I know you're an expert in really managing, and I think it's really, um, it's something where you really have to play the long game with someone. Has, has integrative medicine in terms of diagnostic tools, markers, and treatments, has, the, has it really gotten better over time, or is it just we're more aware of it? We've definitely gotten better, yeah. and the in the data that we have and the understanding that we have of inflammasomes, of inflammatory yeah. uh, ne transmitters, neurotransmitters, of ways that the body deals with, particularly with COVID. Yeah. What an excellent teacher it's been, unfortunately, yeah. in helping us to understand inflammation, yeah. the role of cytokines. I mean, how that's become a part of our yeah. common lexicon. It's a buzzword. Like cytokine I know. Storm, you know? Yeah. Understanding that, that those early cases of yeah. COVID were so deeply linked with inflammation. Absolutely. And the pre-existing uh, conditions that made COVID worse. Obesity, yeah. you know, autoimmune problems yeah. and so forth, asthma. Inflammatory conditions, which, you know, were the, uh, which were the target in a sense, for early, a lot of early cases of COVID. So it, it was like this with Lyme disease. It took us a long time to learn about the chronic inflammatory states of Lyme disease, right? Absolutely. And for a very long time, people were just relegated with Lyme disease. That's a whole other story to insane yeah. asylums because they were yeah. complaining. You know, we, we used to talk about, you know, like uh, Montauk knee or, you know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, upstate, um, you know, upstate ankle or mm -hmm. something like that because people would come in and we knew that there was something going on, yeah. but you know, we didn't, we didn't understand. I mean, it. that was the early, early nineties that Lyme disease came into the limelight. And if you didn't respond to doxycycline, doxycycline, then there was no idea of a concept, a long haul or, haul or chronic. At least we do because of long, you know, you know, like a chronic Lyme and yeah. chronic fatigue, 
this idea of long COVID is, you know, is something that we now accept and, and the research is being done. And because there's so much focus on it, we're actually understanding what that's about. So it's giving a lot of people a, a kind of a, in the rear view mirror, yeah. a sense of what that's all about. Yeah. But inflammation in and of itself is probably, you know, in, in, from an integrative concept, from a functional medicine concept, inflammation is such a powerful, uh, uh, such a powerful term because it, it tells you so much about what's going on without having to see five specialists. Yeah. You know, when you say inflammation, you're talking rheumatologist, you're talking cardiologist, you're yeah. talking oncologist, everything, you're dermatologist, talking you're talking dermatologist. <laughs> yeah. You talk when you say inflammation, it's like anti-aging. What's the what's that what's the root? Threat? Yeah, what's the common and So threat? once you do that, you can then reverse all of these conditions and they do happen together. And that patient today who came in and, you know, it was one of those moments where you sit there and we'll talk about tests that I do yeah. and our markers for inflammation, but... What's funny, when I listen to you talk, and you guys have all heard me speak to other medical specialists, or, I think the common thread of great people in medicine, whether they're in research or in clinical, is when you see that they're still excited about something. Like, I'm excited every day. People are like, oh, you do a lot of injections, you do a lipo, you're doing a lot of things. And I'm like constantly excited about new technologies new therapeutics new ways to look at things new concept and it's just it's really it's an exciting field we have uh what's the most difficult is to help translate uh all the content to a patient in a simple form right because you're clearly you're talking about things you got to spend a lot of time with patients yes. now you're, you do a form of concierge medicine it's not a 10 minute visit in and out right. and it is costly guys but this is your health this is what you know, we're here for a long time. You want to live the best life. To me, there's nothing worth more than spending money on the long game, not just the quick fix of the doctor premium. Um, so how do you deal with this kind of mind-body connection, people coming in for short-term improvements, you trying to talk to them about long-term games? Right. Like, you know, you can't spend 10 hours with people. How, like how your like first consultation, you're just getting a big picture. Give me a little bit of the rundown. Yeah, I mean, so someone who comes to see me, first of all, has been usually referred by someone. Yeah. So they already understand a little bit about what you're gonna, what I'm about. Because it's going to be a process. It's going to be a little bit of a process. However, there are people who need to get out of a jam. Yeah. They have Lyme. They have an asthma attack. Yeah. They have something that they just need to get out of it right now. Yeah. So from that perspective, for those patients... You problem solve. I deal with it and yeah. I'll, and I'll figure out what's going on. I'll, you know, you know, cross reference, whatever yeah. I need to in terms of their health, get their history. So that's one subset. I think for me, of course, as, as a, as a doctor who understands that unless somebody gets involved in their health, the risk of relapse for any problem is exponential. Yeah. So most people would agree that, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, a diabetic, or someone with a chronic health issue, you know, weight loss, yeah. classic problems, like yeah. everybody fails. Yeah. Except if you're in a plan. And if you follow a specific direction and you stay with it and you know that somebody's there. I've generally found if I don't see somebody, I mean the the worst case scenario. Yeah. If I don't see someone for three months, they're up to no good. If they're not, they're they're not no bothering good. you? Yeah, yeah, they're up to no good. They're, <laughs> I know they're planning something they don't want to tell me about. But I know that if I keep them in check, even through those periods, that they will have what I call a soft landing. Yeah. You know, and generally, you know, what I see people coming in, you know, they're like an airplane. They're at 30,000 feet. Something happens to them. And they're just in a free fall. Like, yeah. They're just going to go, you know. So you want to give people the sense if they're coming to you just for a specific Concern. condition. Yeah. You're going to, you know, I do work with them, but for the long haul, for the satis for my own satisfaction yeah. as well, yeah. you know, there's so much I could bring to them that Absolutely. I have to get them, you know, it's like a fire. Prevent you, the next you problem. Gotta, you, know, you got the fire, 
you know, and it's like someone's running out of their house and the fireman's just running in and says, but I forgot my favorite coat. It's like, you got to get out, you know? Oh my, oh my God. You, you know, gotta get out. it's no different than with cosmetics. A lot of people come in, they think the Botox shot's going to fix it all. They think the liposuction is going to fix it all. They think they're going to do this. They don't realize that it's a, this, it's a form of grooming. Your health yes. is a form yes. of grooming. And whether yes. you're getting cosmetic procedures or you're working on your nutrition, um, there's no like one and done. There are some routes that are a little bit more, less, more or less time consuming. Some people are going to go for more than that than others. But I think we all have to realize that everything takes maintenance. And if you want the best out of any form of medicine, cosmetic, nutritional or anything, we can't look at it as a diet. We have to look at it as a lifestyle. Yeah. And that's in a sense, cosmetic has gotten, it's inferred that it's superficial. Yeah. It's not. It's, yeah. it's, it is every part of, you know, it's every part about the skin, right? It's yeah. the biggest organ in the body. Inside so out, outside in. It tells you everything you yeah. need to know. And, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, it's it does. a very powerful source of information. How do you, I know you have a lot of background historically. We won't go into all the details in nutrition. And, uh, you obviously strongly believe as I do that what you, that's the, the most important form of medicine is what we feed our body. Yes. And it's not so much what you do when you're having fun on your vacation. It's like what you're doing on your average day, 365 days a year times, hopefully right. greater than 80 years. Right. Um, how do you get into that topic with people? I mean, are, are you doing a lot of allergy testing for foods now? What are some of the, what are some of the diagnostic tools you use to approach nutrition? So, you know, it's interesting because there are a lot of ways to, People think about diet, you know, and they get this idea either through a diet book yeah. or they have an idea of what a diet would look like. Yeah. And they don't understand what, again, it's with supplements, what are they trying to achieve? Mm. So if your focus is, let's say you have gout or you have uh, SIBO, you know, yeah. small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, yeah. or you have asthma or uh, you have um, arthritis each one of those really gives you a different nuanced approach to your diet. Yeah. Because, you know, if you're looking to reduce inflammation, you might be saying, well, you know, I, that's a big topic, right? So Mediterranean diet, fish, fish based Mediterranean yeah. diet clearly is the starting point for what you need to do. Yeah. But if you have a problem with gout and someone says, well, you know, I'm going to include anchovies and yeah. sardines, you've got a big problem because that person's not going to do well because those are going to increase the uric acid. Yeah, or you have good mercury and you can't be eating as Correct. much fish, Correct. people. So, uh, so you, you know. have to have a nuanced approach to your diet. Mercury yeah. would be another great example yeah. where, again... People just assume fish is good assume, for everybody. The more, like, the better. And, you know, most people come in like... It starts off like this. I check their... You know, I say, well, you know, we're going to check your mercury. Do you have fish? Occasionally. Rarely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I come back and like your mercury's off the roof. Like, do you have what do you eat? He's like, I, I rarely have fish. I have sushi. I'm like, okay, we're making progress. That's fish. Now, what kind of sushi? It's like, well, Toro, you know, Toro, yellowtail, uh, you know, <laughs> tuna. And it's like, well, that's it. Yeah. You know, it's like, but I, I, I only have it maybe once or twice a week. And I'm yeah. told that that's healthy. Yeah. Yes, it is healthy for someone. Yeah. Who can process that? Oh. Uh, so understanding the the macro and the micro aspects of what you're trying to do. If yeah. you have a pre-existing you know, family history of um, cancer, we might want to go heavier into foods that contain indole 3 carbonyls, yeah. like cruciferous vegetables. Right. You know, or if you have a history of having colon problems, we yeah. want to increase your butyrates, yeah. short-chain fatty acids. Food is medicine, like supplements. It's, Food is medicine, and it has to be catered. We're used to being <clears> sold... <throat> A diet, you know, when you read a book about diet, sometimes it's written to get everyone on the same thing. Like, you know, everyone should be on Mediterranean diet. No one should be ever eating gluten. Nobody, but I mean, I know what works for my body. I've been right. doing it for 52 years. I know that if I've had a little, gone off the rails a little bit, I know how to get myself back because I'm sensitive to certain foods. 